my name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss, and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about double-ended color pencils. That's right, we have three different brands here in front of me to compare and talk about should you buy a double-ended color pencil? How do you color with these pencils? What colors do they put on the different ends? And are there pros and cons to the different brands? Those are all the kinds of questions we're going to answer today. And we're going to start by swatching all these different pencils. We have the Crayola, dual-ended color pencils, the Faber-Castell bi-color pencils, and the Chameleon double-ended, just flip-to-blend, perfect color pair pencils. We have lots to talk about. This is going to be fun. Let's get started by swatching all of these pencils. Okay, the first thing I wanted to discover was what colors did they put on each end of these pencils? Now, the three brands, Crayola, Faber-Castell, and Chameleon, each of them chose to do a little bit of a different pairing, so that was really interesting. Now, Chameleon and Crayola each decided to do pairings as far as a light and a dark of each color. So we're going to look at them here in a minute as far as if I think they did a good job matching good undertones for their pairings. Are they a good light and a dark for each color? Now Faber-Castell went a different way. Their pairings are a little interesting. So we're going to look at those swatches here in just a minute. So let's get the swatching done and then we can look at these pairs and see what we think. Okay, so we just finished swatching all the pencils and I can give you my first impressions. So as a double-ended pencil, the Faber-Castell um, bicolor pencils confuse me. <laughs> so the quality of the pencil isn't that fantastic. I know when it's the red packaging, they're usually marketing more towards children. So we're not looking for a high quality artist grade pencil here. As far as the looks of the pencil, this is what they look like. They have the Faber-Castell labeling and um, gold print on them and just the name on each side, white and sanguine, as you can see here. It's good that the color names are towards the center because you're going to be sharpening towards the center both directions. So that's thought out nicely. Um, you also get a silver and a gold, and I'm going to see here if they have much of a metallic sheen. You know, they do have a metallic sheen, so you get a decent silver and gold in this set. Now the pairings. That's where I get really confused at what's going on. First of all, um, I'm a little bit confused by a few things here. Like why would you put violet and black together and not black and white together? That seems like a really logical pairing. I don't understand that. I don't understand like why are you putting yellow and emerald blue together? Um, there was also another confusion like dark gray and black. They are so close in value that it doesn't make sense. Why not uh, like a warm gray? We've got a blue gray here. Why not something a little bit different? Just because it's such a small set. We don't have a lot of colors, just 36 colors. That seems too close to me. Uh, there was one other color that seemed awfully close. Oh, the vermilion and the orange. They're very close in colors. Again, we've got just 36 colors working with us here. I know Faber-Castell has a really deep set of colors they can reach from, so it doesn't make sense to me why we've got a couple colors so close to each other. Um, yeah, so what I think I'm going to do is take a minute now and do a little blending and see what happens when we blend the two colors that they've given us together. I'm going to use this um, empty swatch square that I've provided for myself and put the two colors together and see if I... Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm going to put these two odd colors together and be like, oh, that's why they want me to, to learn that orange and light green together is perfect. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be right back. 
Okay, as I'm going through and doing these two color blends with these Fabric Castell by Color Pencils, it's exactly what I thought would happen. Some of the colors, like the pale orange and geranium red pencil and the pink and the sky blue pencil, when they come together, they are creating pretty blends that would be fun to color with. I can see myself using those combinations. Uh, and the tones, the values between those two colors aren't so far apart that with these quick, messy blends that I'm doing here, um, I could see myself actually using those pencils. But some of the combinations are just not practical, not something I would ever reach for. And really, as a child's pencil set, I think it's doing the kids a disservice by putting the two pencils together. Uh, like that deep yellow and the cobalt green, those two colors are so far apart in value that um, without a solvent or a lot of time being spent layering and being trained how to blend, you can't bring those two colors together really easily. So I'm finding myself frustrated by these pencils and really looking forward to working with the Crayolas and the Chameleons and seeing how I feel about the blending of those pencils. Another thing I am finding is the value problem here with this set. Most of the pencils here are very mid-range to dark in value, so if you were going to be coloring anything um, practical and need a light color, a light, a really, really light pink, or a really, really light um, blue, or a really, really light green, I guess there's this yellow green, <coughs> excuse me, you would have to really depend on the white of the paper to come up through the, the color pencil to provide you with that light color because that white that they provide isn't, isn't going to lighten anything. That's not how color pencils work. With color pencils, you just need light tones, lights, mediums, and darks. So yeah, this set I'm not too impressed with with their both with the color selection and the pairings on the pencils. Okay, so I'm going to give my final thoughts on these Faber-Castell pencils before we move on to the Crayola and Chameleons, because after doing all this testing, I think the way that these are meant to be used as not blending pairs, but as a individual set where each pencil is to stand on its own. So what you've got here is 36 pencils, um, half pencils. So if we compared this set of pencils to a 36 set of, say, Prismacolor pencils, they are roughly about the same cost. Okay, let me tell you how I did that math. So this set of pencils is $12.99, so about $13, and they're about 72 cents per pencil. Now, a 36 set, so you're getting the same number of colors as this, a 36 set of pencils by Prismacolor is about 75 cents per pencil. So, and then you get a full-size pencil and better colors. So, I would steer you towards a 36 set of Prismacolor pencils. You get better pencils, better color selection, and you don't get half a pencil. These pencils are too crumbly. They're not meant to work as a blending pair. You only get half a color. There's too many mid-range value colors and, or mid-value colors, sorry. And yeah, there's so many in here that are, you know, too close in color, like the two oranges, the two greens here. It's just not a good set for the value. And there's these two other double-ended sets that I think are better suited for the double-ended idea. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have this chameleon set here. 
This is the chameleon box. You get 25 pencils, so 50 different colors. And then here you get the Crayola, and you get 18 pencils, 36 colors, and a pencil sharpener. And these are set up so that they are in blending pairs. A light and a middle, middle tone, or a middle tone and a dark color together in one pencil. So as you're coloring something, you just flip the pencil and you can blend the two shades together. That makes so much more sense if we're going to be working with a double-ended pencil. So much more sense. So let me show you these two sets side by side so you can see the difference here. So with Crayola you get a cardboard box, you get a little inexpensive sharpener. I haven't even looked at this sharpener but uh, that's actually a Faber-Castell sharpener. <laughs> so it may be decent, maybe we better look at it. Okay, so my set came with this little sharpener and it does recommend that you use a handheld sharpener for best results. To sharpen, use a handheld sharpener. And it is, it does say Faber-Castell on the plastic body. And let's see how it sharpens. I'll just grab one here and test it. It doesn't say it's a German blade. I prefer a sharpener that has a German blade because those blades stay sharp for so long. Yeah, I mean, it's a basic handheld sharpener. So there's a little value there, you know, a dollar worth of value, but we are talking a pretty inexpensive set here. So the Crayola pencils look like this, and let me show you the swatches we got out of them. I'll do a blend test with them here in a minute, but you can see we actually have some lights and darks and they look like they belong together. The same undertones and values with a couple exceptions. Look at this laser lemon color and that yellow. Those two just don't seem like they belong together. This laser lemon has a lot of green undertones. So that's kind of odd. The other combination that seemed really odd to me was right here, this pink flamingo and this tickle me pink. I think this is supposed to be the light and that the dark, that doesn't work for me as a light and a dark really odd combination right there. And then I think the other thing I saw that was a little odd as I was going along here, let's see if I can find it, was the yellow and the dandelion were very close in color. So like why? We didn't really need that. And carnation and tickle me pink, again, are really close in color. Again, it's kind of the same um, complaint I had with the Faber-Castell. We have a very small selection of colors here and I would like to see a big variety of, of colors in that small selection. I'm trying to see if the red and the scarlet, they're pretty close, but this one has a little bit more, a little different undertones. So maybe I'll give them that one. Yeah. So there was just these two combinations that seemed really odd. So I'm gonna go ahead and time-lapse a blend between the two here in just a minute. But I wanted to show you, since we're comparing this brand and this other brand, which is doing a very similar thing, which is Chameleon. And they've put together blending pairs as well. Now Chameleon, this brand is most well known for their blending markers. They have um, their alcohol markers that blend and, and they do a really cool effect. I've done reviews of them here on this channel before. Very expensive products, but these pencils were actually quite reasonably priced um, and they come in a stellar package. This is a, quite a thick, paper, like a cardboard paper, and it has a magnet closure right here. Here, let me switch views. It has a magnet closure right here, so it stays shut really good. And then it flips around like this, and becomes, I think they call it a workstation. 
that what they call it? Um, now I can't see where they set it, but it lays flat like that. Okay, let me show you the other direction. So you have this easel with all your pencils displayed and at the bottom of the easel is a swatch chart that shows you the colors that are in that pencil. And then the numbering on the pencil is also very unique. Um, so let's just pull, let's say this one right here. So it's got Every pencil has a number, so this is pencil number eight, and then this side of the pencil is zero one, and this side of the pencil is zero two, and then it has a color name as well. Let me bring that up so you can see. And it made me realize that this pencil is right-handed, and I went and checked, and most pencils are right-handed, I had no idea. I apologize, you left-handed people. But when you hold it in your right hand, let me see if you can see that. When you hold it in the right hand, the pencil that is coloring, you can read the lettering. It's correct to the person coloring. So it says Le Lychee. Um, number eight pencil and you're holding the number one side so this would be the light side and then when you flip it around and you're coloring with the dark side now I can properly read strawberry number eight pencil number two side so that's how these pencils work as opposed to the Crayola which it's right-handed all the way like this. So Crayola, and you can read straight across. This is the scarlet side, and that's the brick red side. So it's kind of interesting packaging decisions. I'll show you this angle as well. This angle, you can see really good that swatch chart here down at the bottom, and um, how all the pencils sit in their own individual little tray here to protect them and hold them and get them ready for you. So as far as value for your money, this set here is really quite cool. Um, it came a little squashed in Amazon shipping. So that made me a little frustrated when I saw how Amazon treated that package. Let's see, this set right here... Let me give you the price as of today on Amazon. This one is only $20. Uh, that means it's 80 cents per pencil or 40 cents per color. So I think that's a pretty good value, especially as we get going here. My first impression as I swatched them, the colors colored and laid down really nicely. So that's pretty cool. So what I want to do now for you is do some blending with the Crayolas and we'll see how the pairs that they've put together, how they blend together. I'm not going to do a super nice blend. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. So we're just going to see, you know, if you just sat down and did a really quick blend, do they come together easily? Uh, that will give me a feel for the Crayolas and then we'll do a pairing blend of the Chameleons as well and see how they work. And just so you know, I'm working on my my favorite color pencil paper in my swatch book here. If you're interested in a swatch book like this, check out the link in the video description. We sell these at the Coloring Bliss print shop and you can get it on the awesome color pencil paper. Or if you're interested in swatching, say, markers, you can get it on our amazing marker paper. Come and check out the Bliss print shop. We have so many awesome coloring products and coloring books to help you out. So let's get to swatching. So as I'm working through these, I'm kind of paying attention to which blends I enjoy and the feel of the pencils, quality of the pencils. And like I said before, I'm doing just really quick blends here. And I'm putting a star below any blends that I feel like go together really well and like a blend that I would use again, that I would reach for. So at the end, we'll count those up and see how many there are. In general, the pencils don't seem too crumbly and they are actually pretty creamy. In fact, I'm almost feeling like I'd have to sharpen these quite a bit, but that's okay. I would rather have a pencil that lays down nice and creamy and because that will make me want to reach for it more often. So I like that. 
Um, there are a few that I knew wouldn't go together well, like that laser lemon and that yellow. That was no surprise there. And then the other issue I have is because of the way the pencil is designed with that white lettering, I'm having a little trouble reading some of the colors, just making sure I have the right pencil in my hand. So to quickly read that color name, especially on pencils like that laser lemon one, to read that white lettering on that light colored laser lemon, that was really tricky. Um, so yeah, just being picky and letting you know my experience as I go along. Here we have it. We've got one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, wait, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight out of the 18. Really? That's all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. So eight out of the 18 pencils I would reach for again because the colors went together really nice and they make a pretty blend. Although that one right there was really close in value. Yeah. So eight is a generous number and yeah, but they were creamy. Um, but for that same cost, pretty close at least, just for a couple dollars more, you can move up into and out of the Crayolas and into the Chameleons. So let's do some blending now and see how the pairs of colors work with the Chameleons. And we'll get some impressions as I'm blending. All right, so as I'm doing the blends here with the Chameleon pencils, I must say that these are by far the nicest quality of the three. Better than the Faber-Castell and definitely better than the Crayola. They love to blend together. These pencils are coming in from Austria. Um, that's the same country that is making the Krita color lines. So I would be curious to compare these to the Krita color. I know Krita color is also making the Soho line of pencils for Jerry's Artorama. So we know Creative Color makes pencils for other brands and they are a good quality pencil. So I'd be curious to know if they're also making this line of pencils because this is a really good quality pencil. I know they have a 3.8 millimeter core. They're a hexagonal pencil and I think I think they might even be available open stock. I'm not positive on that. I'll have Steve check and put that up on the screen. Now the crumbs are minimal. There are some, but minimal. You're able to really lean in and get some good blending. One complaint I have is that as they blend together, they seem to sort of become this mid-tone. You kind of lose that light or dark feel. There's a couple of them that still are maintaining that feel, but overall they blend almost too well together to the point that instead of it feeling like you're getting this nice light to dark blend, you end up with just this nice mid-tone one color mid-tone. So I'm having to work pretty hard to keep that value difference, the contrast between the two colors, the two ends of the pencil. So I think maybe that would come from continued experience with the pencil or it's just because the two ends are so similar they're coming together too well and you're not getting enough of a value difference between the two ends. So that's a little something to keep in mind. Overall, I think this is a good set with the awesome case, the high quality pencils, and the good balance between the two colors, the good labeling on the pencils, it's a good set. 
would I have you spend your money on it instead of buying, say, a Prismacolor set or a Polychromo set? I don't know, you're still ending up with half a pencil instead of a full pencil. So that's a drawback. So when I'm done with these blends here in just a second, that's the next uh, conversation I want to have, the pros and cons of having a double-ended pencil. Okay, so let's have a really short conversation about the pros and cons of a double-ended pencil. So I'll use these pencils to write the pros and cons. So a pro of a double-ended pencil is you get two colors in one. So we'll write that. That's pretty cool. Um, but the con side of that is that you're forced with the pairing that is predetermined by that company. So as we saw with our pairings with the Faber-Castell pencils, they were odd pairings. They didn't really make sense. They didn't go together. So it's just sort of what they put together in that set. Now with the Chameleon pencils and the Crayola pencils, they attempted to put pencils together that made a good blending pair. And we had mixed results with that. Let's have a look here. So with the Chameleon pencils, we have some beautiful blends. I think out of all of these blends, most of them I would reach for. Some of them are stellar blends. I was able to get really good contrast, and because the pencils are a good quality, they blended really well together. Now with the Crayolas, I think in the end, I said there was only eight that I would reach for again. So like I said, the pro is that you get two colors in one, but the con is that you have only the colors that are given uh, by the manufacturer in that pairing. Okay, another pro to this. Let's get a new color to work with here. Let's go this way. Is that you have a fewer pencils with more colors. So that's pretty exciting. You get to have lots of colors with just a few pencils. And that at first sounds like a really great deal. But the con side to this is that these pencils are half the length. So if you're a heavy colorer, do lots of coloring, and you know you're going to be sharpening a lot, or if the pencils that you have crumble a lot, the tips break a lot, or you're really rough on your pencils and you know you're gonna be sharpening them a lot, then you're gonna go through that a lot and get to that midpoint and use that one pencil up a lot quicker. And then you're gonna be stuck. Especially if you have a coloring book, say, that's very um, thematic. So maybe it's an aquatic themed, lots of oceans and water to be colored. You're gonna go through those blues and greens really fast because it's only half the length. Okay, I have one more big pro and con to give you a little feeling towards um, double-ended pencils and whether you should invest in them or not. And the idea here is that the pro is you have fewer pencils to store. So with fewer pencils to store, that's fewer pencils to carry around. So you need a smaller bag and all of that, and that's great. But the con to that side 
is that storing these double-ended pencils is tricky. So if you like to store your pencils in a cup like this, and you drop your pencil in there, you've got two problems. One, the tip is down, and that's not good on your tips. Typically when you're a colorist, you wanna keep the tips of your pencils very sharp because that helps you to get good blends and good details with your coloring, and dropping your pencils down into a cup the tip end first will damage the tips of your pencils, cause you to sharpen more, and therefore you go through your pencil more. Also, with that tip down, all you're seeing is the one color up, and you can't see that other color, so picking the right pencil becomes problematic. So you're going to want to store these either flat, so a dish or maybe a cutlery tray, um, that kind of storage, or maybe in a pencil case with um, elastic loops, but be careful of which kinds of loops you use because these pencils have their names right in the middle, so loops may cover names on the pencils. So yeah, storage with a double-ended pencil is tricky because most pencil storage is designed for the standard type of pencil. So again, if you're going to invest in a double-ended pencil, I think the moral of the story is to maybe start with the chameleon pencils because <laughs> I think these are the best quality. They have really good blends. The cost at $20 right now, that's February 2021, seems pretty decent, and you get a storage solution. Did I say that? I can't remember. So I think this is the direction I would send you for a double-ended pencil. This is pretty good. But, is it worth investing in? If you're a pencil collector and you like interesting gimmicky pencils, then yeah, I think that these pencils are worth an investment for all the reasons I just mentioned. But because of all the cons that I mentioned on this pros and cons list, um, I don't think they are as a very, they're just not a very valuable coloring tool for a colorist. I think your money would be better spent and saved up for a standard color pencil set, say Prismacolor, Polychromos, or even any of the other mid-range sets that are out there. Now, if you like this kind of review and you're looking for more suggestions on brands to spend your money on and what I think are good and investments for color pencils, then please subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell because we are working on a large series where we're going to be comparing a very large number of color pencil sets that I have been collecting over the years to kind of guide you and help you see what sets you can invest in. So this is just the beginning of a lot of videos that are up and coming in that series. So hopefully you enjoyed this and I hope you learned a lot about double-ended color pencils. And from Rose and I, we hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye, everyone.